So yeah, we had a pretty detailed session on the request management. So in the second half of the session today, uh, we are going to discuss about the problems, changes, and uh, the projects module. So this is uh, like uh, the addition to the request management to handle uh, your uh, IT environment or um, or your instance efficiently. So that is where this problems, changes, and the projects comes into the picture. So I just want a confirmation from anyone now, like if you can see my screen fine and if you can hear me fine. Yes, we can see your screen. Like this. Okay, great. So if you can see my screen, I have a problem created right here uh, where it says intermittent connectivity issues. So here I'm going to take a real-time use case scenario, uh, which we might uh, face in an organization. And I'm going to walk you through that, like how our application can help you uh, to solve that particular problem or to find solution for that particular problem. So before we jump in completely into these uh, modules, how we can handle in our application, generally, could anyone tell me what a problem is, why a problem is required? Actually, this answer has been given by Jay in yesterday's session, but uh, let's see if anyone has an idea about it. Does anyone know why a problem is required in uh, IT? I mean, in an environment while we are oh, in a help desk environment? All right. Uh, to, uh, to get to know the uh, root cause analysis and if an incident is occurring, re reoccurring, so. Yes, exactly. So Isaac and uh, uh, I believe it is a sham if I'm not wrong. Uh, so you have provided a pretty much correct answer, but uh, Jay has given the exact word uh, yesterday. So our problem is all about acting proactively. You know, like uh, the, uh, the, we have there are two types of support that can be provided: being proactive and uh, being reactive. So request management until now, which we have discussed, which has been explained by Armuham, comes under the request. I mean, the reactive support you know like uh, someone is going to uh, tell you that there is an issue and you're going to react react to that and provide a solution or a workaround right away right there and rights and it ends right away but when it comes to problems we have to have a proactive mind so uh, so how we can uh, be proactive how we can um, uh, see uh, which issues can be fixed so that data can be that data can be fetched using the reoccurring incidents or the request so that is where that is what Isaac and um, the other person mentioned that. So, yeah, so we find a problem. Now, we, we come to know that there is a problem by seeing a reoccurring issues. So let's say that in our use case scenario, we do have a scenario where we have intermittent connectivity issues. You know, like pretty much in most of the organization, you know, like we might have faced these issues where uh, you would be working on something and all of a sudden you might face login issues or the page wouldn't load and uh, they would say that the access point is down or uh, the Wi-Fi is uh, not in range or something like that. So yeah, so we have a similar case scenario here where uh, we have intermittent connectivity issues and uh, there are a number of uh, incidents that has been created by uh, the requesters and uh, one of the technician noticed that and he wanted to act proactively i mean uh, wanted to do action proactively and um, resolve the issue so let's see how that particular technician handles that scenario using our problem uh, module in our service discuss application so first things first uh, we'll have to know what are uh, are how many incidents or how many incidents that has been reported regarding this all right so for that, to monitor that, if we, in our problem management itself, from the problem page itself, we can go ahead and see what are the requests that has been created. So what you could do is you could simply go ahead and, and uh, search, I mean, click on attach and search using a specific category. So you know, let's see, uh, let, let's say if you are going to have, an, if you're having network uh, issues or the Wi-Fi issues, of course, it is going to be created under our uh, network category. So we can sort out all the, request that has been created under a network category and we can associate that particular incidents else. You can go ahead and uh, uh, open all the requests and you can uh, do a wide search just by having a subject search like Wi-Fi, let's say. And we can go ahead and uh, uh, associate that with this particular uh, problem. So by this, we know that how critical the problem is, how many users are facing this issue. So if we have a set of requests, we can go ahead and see if uh, all those users belongs to the same site or the same building 
uh, so this helps us to find um, more information you know like uh, this is the data which we have on that and we are going to act and build the solution or the resolution about the data which we have here so yeah so now we have the data right here we we, we can see how many incidents we are having right here with us uh, so we, we can see that uh, it seems to be a pretty serious issue like um, multiple users are facing this issue so uh, how the technician would think uh, so wireless isn't working so we'll have to check uh, what is the issue with the access point in the meantime he has to provide a workaround right so all the problems and the description will be uh, uh, given in the first page where uh, you can go ahead and provide the description like issue occurs randomly in our, in our case and uh, it seems to be only with the wireless connection that those are the, uh, what do we say? Those are the observation that has been done by the particular technician. So he has entered that information and he has mapped to the category. So uh, anywhere when it comes to a category, subcategory item, it is going to help us to find what's the actual issue is it is going to point us directly to the issue so that we will know uh, what exactly the issue is and we will, we will be able to act uh, or we will it helps us to not to get diverted you know when we are working on an issue so he can the technician can go ahead and map the category and subcategory item and it is going to be same as for the request management so if uh, Rahurumam would have told about the category subcategory items for the request management it is going to be the same for the problems as well and uh, you can go ahead and map it and of course you can map the site and also we do have a possibility where you can associate the services affected so let's say uh, we might have a lot of services in our uh, uh, applications right i mean our organization right let's say if uh, your user is running a linux environment and uh, uh, he has some application running on that particular server or uh, uh, so it's pretty much like it's pretty straightforward what are the uh, services that has been affected uh, by this particular issue so yeah that can be mapped as well and you can uh, mark the technician who is going to work on this particular problem and uh, the technician can simply go ahead and add notes uh, like uh, what are the notes what are the observations what he can go ahead and uh, do on that that can be done as well right from the problem screen so now we come to the workaround part so we have analyzed, uh, we have found that there is a problem and uh, that is a uh, workaround, uh, the, you know, like uh, what we should see what are the uh, impact that has been done and uh, we have to uh, let the uh, users know what are the symptoms that could uh, you could see if the problem persists in your end and uh, we will have to find the root cause as well. So, so uh, simply in the analysis tab, we will be go, go ahead and we can go ahead and enter the impact whichever is happened because of this particular issue. So uh, impact is that uh, we can uh, say like uh, certain users, like uh, certain users who belong to this particular VLAN is having this issue. Uh, certain users who belong to this particular building is having this issue. And that can be, that information can be entered as, as well right in here. That is the impact analysis. And if you have any attachment for that, like a network diagram that has been found during the uh, Wi-Fi issues that can be attached right over here. And uh, the next part would be the root cause. So of course, if you have done an analysis, if you have found the uh, impact, uh, you, you would have gone, found the root cause probably, you know, like, uh, you know, in most cases, it would take time to find what is the exact root causes. Um, it, would, it could be the routing that has been done in the back end, or else it could be the physical access point itself. So that depends. So that root cause information can be added once it has been found, or you can say that it is yet to be found. And I have highlighted this to let you guys know that we do have a rich text format, which we can do here. So you can go ahead and highlight the few information. Like now, uh, if someone is going to take a look at this uh, problem and he wants to know what is the exact root causes you can highlight out uh, with the rest of the points you know that can be done as well uh, and the root cause can the root cause can be added right over here and uh, of course as 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 like the impact analysis you can have a attachment added right here and also you can add the symptoms you know like uh, what what could be the uh, uh, what are the symptoms that we will face if we have the issues like uh, the web page would not load and uh, through the Wi-Fi, then none of the connection would work. So in that scenarios, uh, the symptoms uh, can be added right in here. And uh, so these are this is the analysis part. We will go ahead and find the impact, uh, the root cause and the symptoms uh, that has been um, uh, observed by the technician. So moving forward, uh, we will have the solutions tab. So under this, 
will be uh, go, we'll have the workaround and the solutions uh, that can be provided to the end users so let's assume it is a wi-fi issue and as a workaround you are uh, asking uh, the users who belong to that particular uh, vlan to connect using a lan cable so yeah uh, like a wired connection that can be that workaround can be added and also you can add a solution i hope armo would have spoke about the solutions module where you can go ahead and add a solution and you can publish it to the specific user groups if you would like to publish it to all you can just simply add all the user groups and uh, you can go ahead and uh, choose the topic so in, in in my case it is going to be network and internet so i can go ahead and choose the topic and uh, add and approve it so that this will be visible to uh, the particular technician whoever is i mean particular users whoever is affected by that so since i said uh, it is it belongs to only for the certain uh, people who belongs to certain building or belongs to a certain vlan so in that scenario you can have a user group created temporarily and you can uh, publish a solution or the workaround to them and uh, you can let the users show them you know like if you have found a solution of course you can go ahead and publish it if not if you are going to tell them a workaround you can of course you can publish that as well so that it will be visible for that particular user so how it helps so it it will help you to reduce the number of incidents so whenever the user types in the keywords which is specified here wireless or wifi on the subject this solution will be populated and user can simply click on that and view it and see if issue if that issue is related to this so if yes he will not proceed again in creating it again because he knows that it is a known issue and it is a problem and we are going to work on it so we do not want a more and more, more of incidents added to this right so in that scenario we can prevent the number of incidents that is being created so this will widely help us to uh, reduce the burden on the technician so he doesn't have to go through the request and he yeah, doesn't have to attach it to the problem so that uh, can be helped so let's assume uh, we, uh, we have pro we have a progress and uh, we have found the root cause that it is one of the access points um that is having the issue the wi wireless access point that has been uh, uh, held at the top of the flow uh, and uh, it has to be uh, and like it is a physical issue and it has to be checked with the vendor so in our scenario uh, what we could do is like in a general scenario you know like when it comes to not all the technicians will be communicating with the vendor or with the seller who is providing that access point to us right so in this scenario uh in the in our scenario the technician who is working on this problem is administrator and uh, the person who has the ability to check with the vendor is uh, himaya um, himaya one of the technician who belongs to that particular um uh, team so what they could do is they can simply go ahead and add a task and then assign the task to to the technician so the technician would know that there is a task that has been assigned to check for the replacement and repair for that particular access point so himaya will go ahead and con uh, contact the vendor and uh, he'll check what the, what are the possibilities and uh, he she, she will proceed with the replacement and the repair as per the replacement policy all right so that can be done from here and of course we have put in a lot of efforts the technician has found the issue and uh, he he wants to uh, uh, all wants all his effort to be recorded so what he could do is he can go ahead and add a work log detail so he can specify how much time he has worked in so how in, at what time he has started and what time he has ended so he can add number of work logs this will help uh, to find uh, the work log detail so let's assume um, the vendor is coming to the site and uh, he is going to uh, replace the for that particular access point so you would want to calculate the amount of time that's been spent for the replacement right uh, you can simply go ahead and add a work log and uh, you can specify that this is the vendor um, time this is the vendor time and he worked from this time to uh, this particular time so that you can show them that we can have a record that uh this uh this amount of money has been spent for on the vendor because he worked this much of time on this particular issue so all this information can be recorded and um, uh, managed right from the tasks tab so let's assume um so we do have uh, we have the vendor uh, over the site and uh, he has replaced the access point to us for us and um, the issue has been fixed so how we can um, notify uh, the incidents i mean the users who has created incidents telling them that you can stop using uh, vlan and, i mean uh, wired and you can simply go ahead and connect to the wifi and start using it so that takes us to the actions tab so where you can go ahead and 
um send uh, do multiple number of actions in actions like uh, you can simply go ahead and send notifications right from here and um, also you can uh, um, notify the incident requesters right from here saying that uh, this issue has, has been fixed so since this is being uh, only one requester i have only one email address but if you have requests from different requesters of course you will have the inform uh, all the email address in here and you can contact all of them at once and also if you would like to mark an announcement like saying that hey this issue has been fixed from rn you can simply go ahead and mark an announcement and you can say and display this to all the requesters so that what will happen to they will know that this issue has been fixed and also uh, you can send this uh, announcement as an email and also i mean this is uh, that desktop central notification so i will be talking about that this later uh, later part in the tomorrow session i'll explain about desktop central as well so yeah so from the actions tab you can go ahead and notify the technicians and the requesters right from here and also if you would like to um uh, if you would like to uh, send the notification to everyone uh, uh, through the any other user like the ceo of uh, your company who doesn't belongs to this particular vlan you can go ahead and use a send notification and also if you would like to uh, add a note or a reminder like if you would like to get reminded after a specific number of uh, specific, i mean specific amount of time to um reach uh, the vendor and check about the status you can do that right from here and if you like to add new task you can do it right from here as well and uh, so that is about the actions and the add new tab which we have here and we uh, when we look at the solution so we do have an option to enter symptoms impact details so it is nothing but which we have seen in analysis so if you click on this it is going to take you right here to the symptoms page and if you would like to add them you can go ahead and add it and if you would like to uh, update the solution so issue has been fixed right if you would like to update the solution saying that this issue has been fixed this was an issue because you for an audit purpose you might want that solution to exist you doesn't want to delete that particular solution so what you can do is you can just update that this issue has been fixed after replacing the access point so that uh, brings us to the end of the problem so we have uh, found an issue an intermittent connectivity issue and we found that it is because of that particular um, uh, particular access point and we have uh, replaced it so yeah and also uh, we uh, if you would like to monitor all the actions that has been done even a notes that has been added you can go ahead and monitor it from the history tab you will have all the history and the changes that has been done so it will help you highly on the audit purpose when you would like to know what exactly has happened because you know audit will happen once in a year you will not know what exactly happened like a year ago so you can the history tab will highly helpful when you are going to do an uh, audits and uh, do the calculation so that is about the problem module and could you uh, you can let me know if you have any issues i mean any questions regarding this the problem module i'm sorry if i was so fast uh, if you can if you want me to explain again you can ask does anyone have a question regarding the problem module or you feel like it is pretty straightforward uh yes nazia so that's a good question uh yeah the problem can be linked to the change so let's say uh you are in an organization and you found that this particular access point is a product deficient and it is happening on all the access points that is in your building so you might want to carry out uh, and do this in a change right because you are going to procure um and uh, procure an uh, access point and for known as then any different different repository so actually uh, there is no different repository but you can make use of our solution tab so here you can go ahead and have all the uh, solutions configured so whenever a user types in that particular keyword so let me show you the keyword that can be entered so this is the keyword for my password login issue so if when if i try to create a request if a user try to create creates a request using this particular keyword it is going to show this particular solution so that is no separate uh, database or like a separate repository but you can manage all of them under solutions am i clear okay yeah great 
So yes, uh, so yeah, Nazia had a, a good question right there. So which takes us to our next topic, of course, the change management. So an organization cannot run uh, properly without a change management because uh, we lack to uh, perform uh, an action in an organized way, right? So for example, uh, if you would like to uh, change the access point on that particular building, uh, can we simply go ahead and remove and uh, uh, um, do, you know, like remove and connect it again? So it is not possible in the real time. We might want a downtime that has to be planned. Uh, we want to notify all the stack stakeholders and we will want to get approvals from them because we are going to purchase a new product. So that is where the change management is going to help us. And of course, yes, we have an option to associate change right from here. So I do have a change associated already. So I can simply click on view change, uh, which takes me to the change page. So this is a change which I have created previously. So it has the same description, the reason for the change, uh, which I have given in the problem description. So yeah, so here I have uh, the change created. So I want to change the access point in my organization and uh, my organization doesn't let me do that that easily is uh, simply removing and connecting it. So I, I will have to go ahead and go through a procedure. I'll have to uh, do it in an organized way so that no other, uh, you know, like uh, there is no other impact uh, happening or there is, there is a, you know, like because of this particular change, there should not be any other issues uh, by having this change as a root cause. There should be uh, no, uh, you know, like uh, disconnectivity between the uh, networks or the VLANs or you might want to reconfigure the VLAN. So those things are present in the real time. So and it records all the teams uh, in you know, like multiple teams involved from the network team, from the hardware support team, from the vendor team uh, who needs to uh, uh, provide support on this. And uh, it's change can be highly helpful in that particular uh, uh, scenarios. You know, uh, we do have uh, six stages of change uh, in our services plus application, starting with submission, planning, approval, implementation, review, and close. So this is the six stages that those are involved in our change management. So this is pretty much self-explanatory, but yes, we will go through each and every stages here and we will see what are the configurations that can be done. So before I, uh, I jump into this uh, change module, I would, I would like to let you know about the change roles. So obviously that it is going, that it's going to be multiple roles or the multiple persons involved in a particular change. So we have to know that who are the uh, person who is going to uh, you carry over this change. What are the roles that are present in that particular change? So we do have different change roles. And if you would like to have a custom one, you can uh, go ahead and add it. So this, these are the default ones which we have here. Uh, so change approver uh, and uh, you can again. Uh, so for the change roles, uh, it is similar to the um, request roles, uh, you know, for the technician roles, which we have discussed. You can uh, choose uh, each and uh, every uh, role for the user to, you know, like we, we can choose which access that particular uh, role should have on that particular stage. For example, uh, let's take the change approver. And if, if I want to I want my change approver to have approve access only on the approval change, I mean, approval stage, what I could do is I can go ahead and uh, configure this uh, where I can uh, enable just by doing approval. Uh, check mark put put a check mark on the approval and uh, the edit view and the edit operation and also the approve operation so or else I can simply go ahead and put all access permissions which can be given to that particular change role so if I'm providing this uh, this particular change role uh, will have uh, the user who belongs to this particular change role will have access throughout these modules to view edit and approve the changes so I'm just going to change it. And similar to that, uh, we do have uh, different change roles, like uh, the change manager, change owner. And also I would want to let you know about there is one more role that has to be added in the different place. So obviously we do want someone to have complete access to all over the change, right? Who, who can edit uh, the change if there is something uh, needs to be edited. Uh, so because the change role is going to give access to the specific stages, whichever we have configured in the change role. So in that scenario, what you could do is it is like the technician role, which we had, what you could do is you can simply go ahead and add this particular. You can go ahead and add this particular change is the change manager role. So you see this. 
if i do this uh, this particular username will be listed under the change uh, managers uh, and i can go ahead and configure this and uh, the speciality or the uniqueness of this particular role is he will have access throughout all the stages and he'll be able to edit the values in the changes that is uh, the different uh, roles uh, and the difference between the roles here and the role which we are adding in the technician page so you, uh, you might have question in future future like uh, what is the role that can be uh, that can edit all the part and or all the stages and all the values in the change then that is the sd change manager role so you can say uh, go away straightly and check if this particular role has been added to the technician yeah that is about the change roles that is what i wanted to talk about the change roles and uh, these are the different uh, stages uh, i mean uh, which i was talking about the approval stage uh, the implement implementation stage and this is going to be static uh, so if you would like to uh, rename it you can go ahead and do that but you cannot have an additional change over here i mean additional change stage over here and uh, that takes us to the change workflow this is pretty interesting topic like uh, what should happen uh, when a particular action is taken on that particular stage so let's say uh, we the reviewer or the uh, change owner has access only on the uh, submission stage and uh, what ha what should happen when as soon as he approves that particular submission stage after checking all the values uh, that can be configured in here so when he accepts you can notify the a few, a few of the technicians or i mean a few of the roles that we already have here you see this these are the roles which we had over there and uh, you can go ahead and uh, choose the roles which needs to be notified on approval on the submission stage and uh, you can also choose which stage it should go to the next part you know like on approval on that particular uh, stage what, what should happen next it should move to the planning stage automatically right that can configurations can be done and that is one beauty about this you know like not all the changes are major change you know like uh, for for changing one access point only your manager approval is required or some in, in few case scenarios so what you could do is like uh, you can have a different workflow for the standard change if it is not a critical change of course we will be having uh, emergency change and uh, general change and standard change so in that scenario if you would like to uh, directly proceed without uh, all these stages what you could do is after the approval and submission stage you can simply go ahead and uh, put it across the implementation stage and uh, you can simply edit it so on approval i can go ahead and set this to the implementation stage so that it is going to make my process quick because i do not require approval uh, or you know like maximum number of approvals for that particular change because it is going to be a standard change so i can do that uh, very well right from the change workflow i can choose uh, what is the what should be the next step for that particular change so yes um, and the next thing we have to talk is about the change template so similar to the request template we do have a change template as well but the customizations are little less so of course you can have an additional field and uh, you can also uh, configure the field and form rules so uh, our mom would have explained how a field and form rules works and uh, you can go ahead and configure that as well so that is going to show or hide field or if you would like to throw any alert that can be done as well so it is going to help us to uh, manipulate the field value i mean manipulate the fields based on the field values that you are choosing during the change creation or in the different stages yes as a question Um, I guess you like you know so I'm here. Do you have an option to uh, copy changes? Uh, may I ask? Oh, copy changes in the sense, uh, like uh, repeat the changes, like duplicate. Yeah, duplicate it. Yes. Uh, so you might have some some changes which are reoccurring every week or you know, uh, every fifteen days once. So do we have an option that we can copy an already existing change and don't have to rewrite the whole thing again? uh you know like uh, that is available in um, the request basically but uh, when it comes to change you cannot duplicate it so you will have to create the change so even if it is going to be a reoccurring change then you will have to recreate it but uh, that is a good point maybe i'll take this to my team as a feedback all right maybe we can get that added in future sometime mm -hmm. okay so like over here in the action when it says copy like what is that to i am sorry 
Yeah, I mean, like you know, the actions uh, you have an option called yeah. copy. Yeah. What does that do? I am sorry, my bad. Uh, yes, we do have an option to copy the change. Uh, I am so sorry about that. Uh, thank you for letting me know that. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so it is going to copy the change. So I was looking for the keyword duplicate, which we have in our request module. Uh, so which is not over there. So yes, we, you can go ahead and copy the change as well. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, thank you for bringing that question, uh, Samana. Yes, and uh, yeah, uh, that is about the uh, changes. Uh, yeah, we were, we were talking about the change templates. As I said, we can have field and form rules as well, where you can. Uh, go ahead and manipulate the uh, uh, fields based on the field values that you are ch uh, choosing during the form load or on the form uh, change. And uh, also we do have change custom triggers, which you could use as a similar functionality, which we have in the uh, request module. So that can be done as well. And uh, let's see how uh, the different stages goes and uh, how um, you know, like uh, we can carry forward between the changes. So starting with submission stage, uh, this is the change. Where, uh, this is a stage where you will have all the information, uh, like uh, similar to the uh, problems uh, page. So here we had the problem description, the problem details. Similar to that, we will have the reason for the change and the change details. We can have the service affected that can be mapped here, right as well. And uh, we will have the change details. And as I said, uh, the change manager. So yeah. So you can see, see that uh, in the other uh, roles, you can see that more technicians are being uh, listed over here. But uh, wh when it comes to uh, the change manager, only two of them are being listed. It is because of the roles that I have specified earlier. So you can simply go ahead and uh, you know, like you have to ensure that that uh, particular user has that particular role so that he can play the role of change manager. And the change manager is going to have a complete access over the change. You know, like he will be able to edit the values if he would like to go back to the previous stage or he would like to initiate the approval again. That can be done right from here. And uh, yes, uh, th that can be done from the ch that by the change manager. So yes, that is about the submission stage where we'll have the change details and also which, uh, after approval, after the accept based on the workflow, it is going to take us to the next stage, whichever we have configured. So it is going to take us to the planning stage where we will have the analysis. So similar to the problem, uh, you will have the analysis tab uh, that we will be uh, providing the impact root cause and the symptoms here. We will have the impact, the rollout plan, the back, back out plan, the checklist and the downtime. So all that can be uh, mapped in here. And if you would like to attach any file, like a plan for the rollout or a plan for the back, back out plan, like a, um, uh, like a schedule in a flow chart or something that you have configured, you can simply go ahead and attach a file over here. And also you can add a status comments, you know, like uh, whenever you are trying to change the status, uh, you can simply go ahead and it will prompt, prompt for the status comments. And simply I'm going to approve this particular change. Took us to the planning stage and I can see the status comment right over here. And uh, this particular uh, 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 stage has, be, has the impact rollout in the backup plan and uh, similar to the, um, uh, similar to the request, we do have checklists as well. You can have a set of checklists configured here and you can go ahead and enable and disable it based on that so that you will not miss out anything and you can have attachment as well right in here. So that is all about the uh, planning stage. And also if you would like to uh, view the problems which are uh, whichever is associated or the request whichever is, whichever is associated with this particular change, you can simply go ahead and click on this, which is going to show you all the problems that are associated are the request list. So right now we do not have any request associated with this, but if you would like, we can go ahead and attach it as well. And uh, right now, since we have created it from this particular problem, we do have a problem that is listed over here and that will give, uh, you know, like a overview about what are the, um, uh, what is the, how important that a uh, change is like, uh, how, how it is going to impact the environment that everything can be monitored right from the planning stage. And after approving on the planning stage, it is going to take us to the approval tab. So approval is where uh, you can go ahead and approve or get suggestions from the stakeholders. For example, uh, you, you can see that I will have, uh, I can get suggestions from the cab members, you know, like cab member is uh, nothing but a set of approvals, you know, 
uh, change advisory board is uh, like the set of approvers who would recommend that particular change. So let's assume uh, you are going to uh, change the access point. You might want uh, uh, the advice from the network admin, like whether we can have the uh, have this done uh, at this particular time or. Uh, whether they are all agreeing for this particular change. So that can be done here. So you can simply go ahead and uh, choose the cab approver and you can send the notification right from here. And uh, the cab approver can go, go ahead and recommend this. Once this has been recommended, um, you can go ahead and proceed with the next stage. And also we do have one more option. So if you have noticed in the change workflow, Yeah, so you, we do have an auto approve the change whenever the cab member, all, all the cab members approves it, you know, like if you have a, a two, to, a two to three members in the cab and uh, if you would like to auto approve the change based on this, if this option is enabled, the request will move, I mean, the change will move to the approved status automatically without you even, uh, even clicking on this. So right now, I'm simply going to approve it so that it will take us to the next stage, which is the implementation stage. Uh, so here uh, we can, uh, this is the place where we will uh, implement uh, this particular change. So let's assume it is a huge change, like uh, you're having those access points all over your building, uh, in all the building for this, the same model, and you, do, you want to replace all of them. And if the vendor is uh, accepting to replace all of them, uh, you would want to do this as a long project, right? Uh, in a, as a real-time project, you would want to uh, place uh, different orders and you would want to see uh, how it can be implemented in the real time without affecting the networks. So that can be checked, uh, you know, like if you would like to do that as a project, you can create a new project right from here, or else you can go ahead and associate the existing project if you have already uh, created it separately. So that can be done uh, right from here. And also if you would like to uh, create new, uh, create and assign tasks to different technicians, you can do it right from here. So this is going to, uh, help us to uh, assign the task uh, to the technicians, to the owner. So let's assume uh, like uh, we would want to uh, place a PO to the uh, vendor and that has to be done by a different technician. What you could do is you can choose that particular group and you can go ahead and set that particular technician who is going to work on it so that he will he'll have this task under his name and uh, he can go ahead and uh, complete the task and we can see the percentage of completion in here. And once the person, I mean, once this has been completed, we can proceed with the uh, next step of uh, implementation. So as I said, as we have seen in the problems, we do have work plugs as well, where you can go ahead and add a work plug in real time. So it is again going to um, uh, um, help us to monitor the effort. It is going to help us to um, uh, capture the effort that has, that the technician has spent across this particular uh, change and that can be uh, added as a work log. And also if you would like to uh, schedule a downtime, uh, uh, you can simply go ahead and uh, do it in the uh, downtime. Um, if you have configured it in the planning stage, it is going to reflect it right in here. So this helps us to uh, monitor like what is the exact time uh, downtime in this particular that has been planned. So whether we are good to go or not, so that can be monitored in the implementation stage as well. And uh, once the implementation has been completed, uh, we will have to uh, have someone to review it, right? So that takes us to the review stage. So in this review stage, uh, someone has to do the change, uh, review the change that has been done and someone has to uh, accept, uh, you know, like uh, 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 say that, that this change is a successful change or a failure change, you know, like uh, the change could uh, result in uh, some other issues like uh, uh, with, uh, this, this can be done as like a regression testing, like the second uh, second review, review on the top of the change that has been done. And uh, they can go ahead and add the review right over here. Or if, it, if they're having it as a review report in a separate file, uh, they can go ahead and add that particular uh, review file over here. This is going to help us to uh, ensure that uh, well, uh, whether this change has been carried out successfully or not, or whether this uh, change has, is a successful one or the uh, failed one that can be viewed right from here. And uh, completing this will uh, take us to the next stage, which is the closed state, uh, where you can uh, have a set of, um, you know, like uh, the closure code, whether it is a successful change or whether it is a rejected one. Uh, for example, if uh, it has it is not uh, re recommended by the cab members, you might want to reject it. In that scenario, you can uh, simply go ahead and click on this change is rejected. 
so that it is going to consider as a rejected change you know like uh, it is not going to uh, they, they can you can complete it still but it will be as a rejected change because they have uh, uh, the recommendations were not done so that brings us to the last stage of the change flow and upon completing this uh, that would be the end of the change life cycle and we do have conversations uh, tab where you can view the notifications that has been sent or the um, email that has been triggered right from this particular change uh, like if you would like to send any notification that can be sent from right from this particular stage itself i mean uh, from the change page itself that is going to be reflected here so you can uh, keep track of it and you can monitor that and also we do have a history tab where you can go ahead and monitor all the actions or the uh, uh, you know like all the uh, changes and the actions that we have done or the modifications that has been done by any particular user so you can see that uh, that uh, the administrator has accepted it. That is because I've logged, logged in as an administrator, and that is going to give up give us a summary of the actions that we have done. Like this particular stage has been approved by this particular uh, user or the approver. That can be uh, shown in the history tab, and it is going to um, yeah, it is going to highly uh, helpful in um, highly helpful in the audit purpose when you are going to see whether this particular change, how this particular change has been carried out that can be completely monitored under the history tab. Yeah, that is about change management. And that is one another thing uh, I would like to let you know about change management, where we do have different uh, change additional fields that you would like to add. If you would like to add an additional field, you can simply go ahead and add it. And uh, you can have the value entered over there. Like if there is any specific uh, a uh, value that needs to be filled during the change process that can be done right from here. And one another important topic is the change SLA. So we can uh, see that uh, matching this particular criteria change SLA can be approved. And I remember uh, if I'm not wrong, it is Sham, I believe. He has asked if we can uh, go ahead and uh, yeah, Anil has asked based on the percentage if the SLA escalation can be sent or not, that can be sent from our uh, change module, you know, in the change SLA, uh, if the change is completed at 75% and you, and uh, if you would like to uh, escalate that at that specific time, uh, once the, it has been uh, elapsed after 75% of time, so you can go ahead and configure it here. And if it has been, uh, time has uh, crossed the 90%, if 90% uh, of time has been occupied, then you can simply go ahead and configure the percentage of uh, the time elapsed to escalate this to the end users or the roles or the users whoever is playing that particular roles. So that is about the change SLA. You, if you would like to create a new SLA, yes, of course, you can uh, um, go ahead and configure it. And uh, if you would like to execute an uh, operational hours or in the calendar hours, you can do that right, uh, right from here. You can choose whether which needs to be done. So the SLA will not run during the non-operational hours. Yeah, as I said, we do have the change uh, custom triggers as well. Like uh, if you uh, if you want to uh, execute a custom function or if you would like to uh, execute any specific command in script or if you would like to execute a Java class, that can be done right from here. This is going to help you to execute whenever a change action is taken. For example, if you would like to um, notify some technician or the uh, change uh, manager uh, or the, who are the person whenever the request is approved by the cab member. What you could do is you can uh, choose this particular action and you can go ahead and have a script to send an email or else you can uh, have a, a custom function uh, configured right in here, which is going to allow you to configure the functions and it is, uh, you do not want to have any uh, external script uh, need to, needs to be configured. You can simply configure your script right in here. You can configure it here. I mean. In the custom triggers, you can simply choose that. It is going to execute that action based on whatever the criteria that you have given here. And yes, uh, that is the uh, change uh, custom triggers, uh, which you would like to know. And yeah, apart from that, we do have also the risk uh, that can be like, uh, what is the risk uh, in that particular change? Uh, what is the risk involved in that particular change, whether it is high or low or medium, that can be also done as well. And if you have any, uh, additional uh, value that you would like to add, you can simply go ahead and add it right from here. 
and uh, as i specified earlier we do have the change types like the major change minor change and uh, you can uh, choose whether this change needs to be pre approved or not so uh, as i said let's assume yeah i have a standard change creator as uh, you, if you remember that uh, when you have a standard change you can simply use this uh, enable this option so whenever you change choose this change type during the change creation it is going to auto approve it so it is simply going to take you to the end so in the case which some uh, said like uh, the activity which will happen every week you might want, don't want to uh, uh, anyone to approve it you know like it could be like a maintenance activity that needs to be done so in that scenario we can uh, create it under a standard change it is going to pre approve it automatically yeah that is pretty much about the change module which we have here i hope i have covered uh, all of them so if you would like to i mean if you have any questions regarding the change in the problems you can let me know i know that it is pretty straight forward but uh, just in case since I, i've been going uh, fast so i just want like to, i i would con i would like to confirm that everyone has understood this uh, can we modify the change workflow yes change workflows can be modified and new change workflows can be created so it is basically like a, a transition you have seen the request life cycle right similar to that you cannot mandate feeds and execute scripts but it is something similar to that uh, where you can based on the approval and the reject you can notify or you can choose who you want to notify and the next action or the next stage can be configured in here yeah and if you would like yes you can create a new one as well and answer for your question is yes. you can add a new workflow as per your preference Does that answer your question, Nishu? Yes. Yeah. Great. So I hope that answers Nishu's question. Does anyone have a clarification on the topics uh, which we have discussed today about the problems and change modules? okay then i would take that as a no and that brings us to the end of today's sessions